Welcome back, everybody, to Grand Tactician Civil War. Carpet Grandpa Gaming is episode 23 of our Rebel Summer 61 campaign using the AOM mod. So you see here at the uh, front lines overview, we have made a lot of headway out here in the West. Just having, finally having to get rid of the Army of uh, Southwest Missouri. Hopefully this episode, plus Fort Kearney, which we should also be moving on this episode. Uh... We did fight two battles last episode. We fought a uh, third battle of Cairo and the fourth battle of Winchester. Uh, winning both of them. And it looks like we're about to have ourselves the fourth battle of Cairo with the first corps army of the Cumberland approaching. I think the last battle was against their second or third corps. Once again, they do have a numbers advantage, but the Federals will always have a numbers advantage. But uh, going left to right, you have the siege train still sitting at St. Joseph. I'm waiting for them to go fully green. I think that's going to take about four or five more days. I think they'll be ready to go on August 1st. Then I'll send them up to Omaha City and out towards Fort Kearney from there. Uh, my court traveling harem is still setting at Quincy, uh, getting its readiness up into the green. Army of the Mississippi under Lee is now at Peoria. And they are secure in that city for us. So I'll be moving the harem up into Chicago, hopefully, during this episode. It shouldn't take them too much longer to get their readiness up. I don't think I'm going to need them full green. I just need them good enough to get there. The Army of Western Tennessee is still sitting over here at uh, Springfield. I did have them build a supply double for themselves. This is kind of a supply wasteland, so that should handle their supply uses also. Same with the uh, traveling harem. I had to build a lot more supply depots than I would have liked. But I needed the depots to keep the militaries on the move. Fortification for Fort Siegfried is now complete at Kingston. And I do have the engineer corps moving along and securing our trunk line communications. As you can see, the trunk line is now starting to shift. Even though this... Uh, this telegraph office is not completely built yet. The trunk line is now shifted from going down and around to heading straight up the line towards Cairo. So that will shorten our communications even more. So I'm very happy with that. And it looks quiet everywhere else along the front. Once again, our river squadron is still not up to par. It's got no ammunition. It's got no food. The ships are still in need of repair. This says it'll be ready to go in one day, but it's only at 72%. And the two ironclads we're building are now only at 40%. So it's going to be sometime next year before we have those two other ironclads. And possibly I'll be able to start clearing the uh, rest of the Mississippi. Kind of need to get them kicked east of Cairo so I get my supply lines opened up a little bit better. Alright, I think that covers everything for right now, but... uh. To play here, we should have ourselves a battle here pretty soon. Here they come. Just in time to camp and move on again. There we go. Alright, first, first Corps Army of the Cumberland. 23,343 infantry, 568 cavalry. Only four guns. Okay. Our commander John Davidson, once again going up against the Army of Cannibal, 14,067 infantry, 2,546 cavalry, and 15 guns under command of John Floyd. So they do have the numbers advantage, but uh, Federals have not been able to really bring that numbers advantage to bear, so uh, let's once again show them the error of their ways. Welcome, my grunts, to the fourth battle of Cairo. So uh, we are on the defensive on the Copperton map. The Federals are entering from this point right here. So they're going to come straight down this road. Possibly split here. We have a farm track coming to a ford here. We have a bridge over here at Mrs. Brooks' house. And another bridge here between the Jensen and Armstrong farms. So I'm signing up to cover all three fords. They do have a number advantage. So I'm not going to be giving the Federals much of an opportunity to cross. I do have the... Wise Legion set up on this ford here to Phillips Legion in the center. 
and Walker's Division on the right with the Loring's Cavalry Brigade or Loring's Division in the center. Able to flex in any direction as necessary. So very straightforward defense. I only have the one independent battery I do have set up right here. The other batteries are attached to the divisions. And if you notice, these are uh, four division or four brigade divisions. That's uh, because these are actually all started as regimental size commands. So until I start getting some larger brigades in here, they will stay like four regiment commands for the most part. I don't think it will be changing at all, but that may change. I don't know. All right, so it's uh, 5.13 in the morning. We do have all day for this fight, and uh, hopefully we start seeing some lead elements of the Federals in the first few hours, so I have to wait around too long. All right, it's now 8.34 in the morning, and we have our first sighting of Federal Cavalry, the 2nd Kentucky Regiment. So I'm assuming this corps is what's left of the... No, Kentucky Militia is in the uh, Army Southwest Missouri. Never mind with that one. No, I'm thinking of Kansas Militia. My bad. I'm thinking this corps might be made up mostly of the Kentucky Militia. They're coming right down the main road towards the Stone Bridge in the center. Nope. Calvary's splitting off. They might just see this one regiment I have standing up behind a laying down regiment over here. So the boys down too. I don't think the cavalry would, the uh, artillery would scare them off. It's only 250 men in that regiment. How much cavalry did they have? 550. So they got one more regiment somewhere. And infantry's right around here. You can hear them. I don't. There you go. Let's see, I hear some, I see a little bit of a dust trail, not much, but here's the infantry. First Brigade, Second Division. Now, it looks like it's going to be a little bit still before we have any contact, so I'll be back. All right, it's now 9.05 in the morning. Calvary is pushing across the uh, stone bridge over here by the Jensen and Armstrong Farms with Brigade of Infantry coming up behind them. Still got another brigade of infantry on the main road, so we don't know which road they are going to take. I'm assuming they're part of the same division. They need to check. Yep, so they should be falling behind this brigade over here. Alright, infantry. Stand up. Let's give them a warm welcome. We can fire at any time now. There we go. Five men on that volley, and you pull them back immediately. Once again, we don't have good weapons in this force. It's all the reboard, mixed muskets, and smooth bores. All right, boys, lay back down. And here they come again. To the right at the edge. Yeah, definitely got better range than we do. Alright, infantry's pushing across right behind them. And they are just glitching across that bridge. That's a little annoying. in line better a little bit. And now you know what's in front of you. You're not going to want to come at closer. And they're pulling off. Played my hand a little too soon there. So the brigade's coming up at the double quick. And we do have forces over here. Here's that other cavalry regiment. Let's let them know we're here. And their corps commander. 
Looks like they're hoping to come up this way also. I also, do a, I also do have one cavalry regiment up this way, just keeping an eye up in this direction. And I had them start building breastworks while they were there because they had nothing else to do besides wait. First Kentucky. What are you boys doing? Okay, they were treating off. Thought they were looking for another way across there. 7 to the crossfire. Anybody else besides this cavalry regiment here? They only came into the battle with 250 men. They've taken 100 cash. They still shows them with 200 men left. That's annoying. Drop some canister into that flank, please. These brigades are just glitched right now. Hopefully they don't touch on the battery. Looks like they might. Please don't tell me you're in hand. they're in melee. Halt them. They're dragging the guns along. <laughs> Stop them. Boys, doing. I've broken that brigade. What were you boys thinking? Still have these boys laid down over here, so maybe they'll make a push across over there. It's had a battery come up. They only got the one battery of four guns. Actually, shows this battery is having zero guns. Hmm. Still got more men coming down the road here. We'll see what happens. That brigade's totally glitched out, but I'll let this one keep firing as it's kind of free experience points for them. you up here. Come on. He's doing this to me again. Now let me order the Corps Commander around. That's a little annoying. Alright, looks like it's going to be quiet here until another uh, brigade shows up. Here comes another one down the road. First Kentucky Brigade. Once again, like I said, I'm not worried about that battery. Is they uh, sent these boys to counter battery and just see if we can knock them out. I'm pushing a little closer on them. Right, well, we uh, see off this uh, weirdly turned unit. I will be uh, await the rest of their arrival. All right, it's down 955. We do have another brigade coming across the uh, lower bridge, and we have a brigade of Kentuckians crossing at the upper bridge. So they're only 1,000 men. They're not part of a division, so they're a separate brigade. They're about to walk into a hot mess themselves. Man, these boys are getting actually across it up. I didn't realize it, but this battery broke. Those men go. Hopefully, they didn't retreat off the field. Who's wounded? Green. Oh, really? Fall back, man. 
They're in rifle range. Okay, I'm gonna keep my infantry laid down. Hopefully, uh, they'll push across. They may be. They definitely have us ranged. And they see us. Stand up, boys. Turn range then at least there's mixed uh rebores. You're just out of range. You boys lay back down. Let them take care of that for now. Third officer will push in, get rid of them. Same with you, Virginia. A lot more brigades coming down right there. I have a feeling this brigade's armed with some sharpshooter weaponry. East Tennessee Brigade coming up behind another 550 men. There those boys go. Nice lay putting back down for now. Back here by the Corps, Commander. These guys fled also. Everybody else on the road back here. So what I'm going to do now is order the Wise Legion up behind. Get along this fence line behind them. Okay, these boys must have sharps. Up oh, there they go. Give me a detachment to handle those guns. Everybody course down here. This is definitely where the main action is going to be. Everybody's coming this way. Hopefully Wise can get in place quickly enough to do some damage on the retreat. There's his order setting out his way. I don't think he's going to be arriving out there in time, though. They just broke. They're about to go. One more brigade goes and they're done. Not a 
a very exciting battle. Yep, East Tennessee's already pulling back. There's retreat order. Definitely not going to be arriving in time to block, especially everybody's going to be trying to get it across that ford. Let's move forward and hit these boys, please. Still trying to push across. I would not want to be that brigade right now. Oh boy. They're actually still trying to push across. These guys are about to glitch across it. There they go. They managed to cause some extra damage. a bunch of additional casualties right here at the end as I ordered everybody forward, but their casualties still exceed ours. Took a big jump in casualties when this brigade came across over here. Get the hell across. Move. Don't clog up on each other. Yeah, we're out of time. We should have been across by now. Just getting across there. So they're never in place in time. Oh well. I think that could have gone better. We took a big jump in casualties right at the end. Right at the end, we took a big jump. So we lost 458 of our 13,941 infantry, none of our cavalry, none of our 24 guns. So we lost 484 of our 16,815 men. We took down 3,400 of their 23,000 infantry, 200 of their 550 cavalry. I know we took down a lot more cavalry than that. Yeah, zero of their guns. Total of 3,600 of their 24,000 men. Yeah, we have no viewer units in this force, so I'm just looking to see if we got any of the commanders. We did have the one commander wounded. And Captain Green from the Gauley Artillery was wounded. Alright. You get any of the Federals... I didn't even see the mechanics right to me show up at all. First Kentucky, we've seen them. Third Division's got one brigade in it. We got none of their officers. Okay. Rarity, but it does happen. I'll close out of here and see you all at the newspaper screen. 
victory at the Fourth Battle of Cairo. First Corps Army Cumberland fleeing in panic. And why does it show Captain Green losing face twice? Unless, uh... Oh, their Captain Green and our Captain Green lost face. That's funny. If that's if that's what that is, that's that's hilarious. All right, battle K, fourth battle K was ended with first Corps army coming in retreating in panic. The enemy's reportedly suffered total casualties: three thousand five hundred eighty-two men. There are five hundred twenty-nine killed and six hundred eighty-four captured. Our casualties total four hundred eighty-four men with sixty-three killed, seventy-three missing, and the rest are wounded. We captured one thousand five hundred eighty-five rifles and zero guns in the field, and sent six hundred eighty-five soldiers off to our prison camps. All right. Now we got that knocked out. Let's get this out, rolled out of the way. I don't think there's any more actions coming up anytime soon. So hopefully we can make it the next four days in August 1st. So I can uh, get the August monthly out of the way. And I forgot to mention the Indian Army during the recap. Is they are on their way to Milwaukee. And hopefully they will be there in the next few days. All right. Come back at the next incident. Once again, we have ourselves another action at Cairo. This time, it's the Second Corps Army of the Cumberland under Irvin McDowell, bringing 13,075 infantry. 60. How the hell does that force even exist? That should have been auto disbanded. They only got 61 men in the cavalry force. That's my intelligence is that bad. And five guns going against our 13,710 infantry, 2,565 cavalry, 14 guns. Now, one thing I just started doing, I probably should have waited until after them we will start building a hospital over here also as i noticed because there was a hospital here in new madrid it's actually a level two hospital it's pretty good its influence does not extend across the river so with all the actions that we've been fighting here at cairo i decided it was best to build a hospital right there at cairo so uh hopefully that will help us going forward especially with morale but uh Barely even on force. We're actually, uh, we're numbers wise, we have the advantage on this one. So uh, let's jump in. Show McDowell the error of his ways. It's 9:20 in the morning. Let's see what time of day it is on deployment on the battlefield. But I have a feeling if he doesn't attack us on day one, I'll probably do an overnight withdrawal. Welcome, my grunts, to the fifth battle of Cairo. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm starting to think the Army of Cumberland is, uh, honestly, we haven't seen the Army commander on the field at all. I think he's probably our biggest, one of our greatest allies right now. Is he's just kind of ramming his core into Cairo and it's trying to bludgeon them into non-existence. So we're on the uh, Big Creek map. We're a Proud Peak map. Whichever name you want to go by is really no uh big town on this map to take a name from and we're once again defending proud run bridge so i'm going to run the same defense i had on this the last time so i'm going to change up i did have a cavalry brigade or the cavalry division up here last time when i had the uh, army of western tennessee out here guarding it this time i believe i'm going to put an infantry brigade up here with all of my artillery because the federals are using the same road again so i'm thinking all my batteries up here with the one infantry division possibly two infantry divisions up here actually one division down here with the cavalry division so i have a feeling once the federal side is here they might just try and force an attack over here at this bridge again so i'm not sure if it was mcdowell or not who was commanding the last attack they did here It's supposed to be a very bad idea on my part, but once again, we're using the rail line as a natural defensive position. So get these troops set up and I'll come back in once we have contact with the Federals. All right, it's now 1140 in the morning and uh, we've had intermittent sightings of the Federals throughout the day. They've been marching down this road here and cutting up this way. Uh, my artillery firing into them did not drag them across like it did in the last time we fought them here. 
but it looks like they are massing in the woods over this way we got cavalry here infantry entering through over here so i have started shifting all my forces further to the right i still do have some just out building breastworks getting their leveling up 23rd virginia is down to 531 men i think i'm going to collapse this regiment down to another organization at some point as uh, we raise more brigades we have a lot of this is the army cannon while there are a lot of virginians in it so there's other uh, regiments to uh, collapse it down into but it looks like mcdowell's playing this one smart and massing up for an attack Looks like it'll be a little... What the hell are you boys doing? On the damn rail line, not on that damn fence. Whatever the hell they're doing. Who is that? Stanley, pull your act together, please. It looks like it'll be a little bit still before the Federals actually push in their attack. They really don't have the numbers for it, but let them come on. All right, it's now 1240 in the morning. We've had the one Federal Brigade come forward, and there's 60 cavalry in the 2nd Illinois Regiment's kind of floating out on the flank over here. I really thought McDowell was massing his men. He's just kind of... Marching them through the woods and sending them forward one at a time. His forces are look to be tired and disorganized. They have not recovered from their last battle at all. Ranger, all right, boys, stand up. They fired at us from a longer range than we could hit them from, so I had to wait until they got a little bit closer. take out this cavalry regiment just to get rid of them. I think these boys are trying to push on the rail line to get some cover, but they are not going to make it. Interesting. They're right in each other's faces. Now I kind of wish these guys had the uh, the volley perk because they'd be really good right there. Now go destroy what's left of that regiment, please. Lay you boys back down. Quite a few casualties in those short volleys. Almost, well, Federals took 350 casualties in that. As a 60-man regiment, this thing should not exist anymore. The game should have taken it out of existence. So we're going to do it for it. I hope you boys are having second thoughts about coming forward alone. Go get them. I just want them gone. I don't know if I can get into hand to hand with them. What's going on? 
busted. I got no idea what's going on now. Unless they're glitched down, that's gonna break my brigade. There you go. They're down to 20. This this is a unit that should have surrendered immediately. The fact that the game doesn't surrender it. Oof. All right, recall, boys, recall. Yeah, they're down to 25 men. That organization shouldn't exist anymore after this battle. Guys are finished. Very good. Now, I'm gonna bring you in behind the cavalry. I don't want you on the cavalry. I want you behind the cavalry. Damn it! You guys came up just short of your first perk. Doesn't really matter, like I said, I'm going to be getting rid of this organization at some point. Yeah, they're angling right in at my cavalry. There we go. Break them, boys. Loring's wounded. Division commander. Someone's getting a promotion. We are... I gotta wait for them to push in closer. They were well out of range of my cavalry. I need those lorns I have ordered built. Start bringing you boys down. you guys to move a long time ago. it seems like my artillery up here is kind of glitched out those I ordered them to move a long time ago how are you always looking not very far along Range difference is telling on the weapons. I do need better weapons in this force. Set fire and back off. Interesting. Once most of your infantry is out of the woods, I'm going to start swinging these brigades out and around on them. Now right, let's see if I can't get you boys over here again. Get some shots across the river if they're in range, but I'm doubtful. Here we go, him with those main arts. Boys are still out of range. What organization is this? Fourth 
appreciate first the vision. Give it to them, boys. Boys need to halt. Going through the hill of fire. Them batteries just not moving. We need you down here. I don't think it's going to matter, though.
there they go. We got 11 minutes on the clock, cause some extra damage. We're almost at the major victory. Get that battery, get me them guns. Nope, we got my 19.2%. That should give us a major. So I'm still showing a minor up here. Should be a major victory. Just can't chase these boys down. Left. Come on. Now you boys stop. You guys way out range. We're just eating casualties. I don't know why it still says a minor victory up here. We have the major. I took a few more casualties at the end there than I really wanted to because retreating AI is just faster than your forces and always seems to have a longer range when retreating. So uh, we lost 490 of our 13,705 infantry, 372 of our 2,563 cavalry, zero of our 14 guns, total loss of 862 of our 16,452 men. Took down 2,500 of their 13,000 infantry, 35 of their 60 cavalry, and all five of their guns. Total also 2,600 of their 13,000 men. Alright, we did lose Loring Wounded, Division Commander, so somebody's going to be getting a promotion, so I'm going to have to figure out who that is. So, uh, let's go see if we got any of their commanders. Alright, Ingersoll, Commander of the 2nd Illinois Cavalry, was wounded. Emery. Commander 2nd Brigade, 2nd Division. Cook, Commander of 4th Brigade, 1st Division. And we've got three other officers. Alright. Get closed out of here and I'll see you all at the newspaper screen. Glorious victory at the 5th Battle of Cairo. Second Corps Army to come in, fleeing in panic, and it looks like uh, General Walker has become a national hero out of that one. So the 5th Battle of was ended with Second Corps Army to come in, retreating in panic. The Army's reported suffered total casualties of 2,592 men. There were 368 killed and 508 captured. Our casualties total 862 men with 115 killed, 101 missing, and the rest are wounded. We captured 1,244 rifles and one gun from the field and sent 502 soldiers off to our prison camps. So even though it showed us having a minor victory at the uh, end on the map, it did still register as a major. All right. Now, it's July 29th. I'm going to roll this. Once again, we did have our two battles for this episode, but I'm going to try and roll this through to August 1st. And uh, as things stand right now, we now have Peoria secured. He's going to have Lee sit there get his readiness back up. I'm still waiting for the hammer that readiness to come back up here. So I did order them to move already. They have their orders in about an hour and a half. And they're going to start moving against Chicago. As I want to get the army of the Mississippi set up at Danville. And then move the uh, army of western Tennessee across the river from Vichens. Uh, Couldn't speak for a second there. 
Indian Army's almost at Milwaukee. I think hopefully with these uh, extra soldiers that we did add, since they're now just under 12,000, I'll be able to secure Milwaukee faster than we have previous cities. And it looks like the siege train is almost at Omaha City. Now let me go figure out who's going to be uh, taking over command of Loring's division. I'll come back in with that uh, command change. All right, we do have a command change here, and I actually didn't get the chance to promote anybody as Daniel Frost, who was wounded at a previous battle, is back in action, so he's taken over command of the division. Even though he's an infantry officer, he was a major general without a job, so he gets it by default. Nope, my bad. He wasn't wounded. He was uh, a division commander in the Army of Western Tennessee before I disbanded it. I keep saying Western Tennessee. That was the uh, Army Missouri. My bad. I keep saying Western Tennessee, the Army Missouri. So he was a division commander in the Army Missouri before it was disbanded. So uh, he gets the job since he does not have one. Now right, let's start this map rolling. And let's see if I can make it to August 1st without another action. All right, it's now August 1st. So, uh, I did have to make a few changes in orders here. Uh, we don't see them now, but, uh, honestly, I ordered the harem out of, uh, Quincy. Totally forgetting <laughs> Totally forgetting about the Army of Southwest Missouri up here. And as soon as we moved out of Quincy, I did get a siding on their three corps in between Bloomfield and Des Moines. So, uh, as soon as our readiness gets back up a little bit, because we were still in the yellow when I ordered them out, which did not to move it up the river and then back down again has not helped their readiness. I'm going to wait for the readiness to increase a little bit more. And then we need to go have a throw down fight with what's left of the Army of Southwest Missouri up here. We need to get rid of them. So instead of having the Army of Mississippi head over to Danville like I had originally envisioned, they are now on their way to Chicago. Pike and his Indian allies have made it into Milwaukee, so we will control the one major city of Milwaukee here next episode, hopefully. Siege train is on its way to Fort Kearney. As soon as this siege is done, they will be coming up here to St. Paul in the Minnesota Territory to take down the fortresses there. That will give us to one major city in, in the Minnesota Territory. Uh, I've not seen the Army to come one again. We have a siding on their headquarters sitting here. So that There's a hospital there, so that's probably where all their core are masked up. But uh, that's a problem for the next, after the winter, when we finally start pushing in and closing up the uh, campaign. And the federal forces at Washington are still just kind of sitting there. And the British are still not across the border. So even though it shows the Army of Canada here, this fort's still under control of the U.S. So I don't know if you're... Doesn't look like they're besieging it, so I don't know what's going on here with the British. They are just not moving at all. Just kind of sitting up there saying, hey, we're going to help and wave flags from the sidelines and give you guys moral support. We're, we're, we're not sending our troops in. I don't know. It's really what it feels like. It's like, yeah, we're just going to give you moral support. Alright, but like I said, I think we're going to end this episode here, so I'm going to open up the next episode with the August Monthlies and answer uh, a few questions on the economics of the game for uh, one of the viewers. Uh, probably not going to get the best answers in the world, as I did not heavily lean into economics this time around as I have in previous campaigns. But I will do my best. So once again, if you're a new viewer, return viewer, you're not yet subscribed, please hang on that subscribe button. If you do, remember that bell icon so when the next video comes out. Follow along the series and enjoying it. Don't forget to bang at that like button, but stroke that comment section. And I will see you all in the next episode. Stay grumpy.